My guest calls herself a late bloomer. Her story will give you courage to dust off those broken dreams and believe God for what may seem impossible. Out of the Dust is the story of an unlikely missionary. It's a story I encouraged Avis Goodhart to write, but I now realize there is so much more to the miracle of this life. Avis, welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here. You were holding back on me, girl. <laughs> Would they could make a movie just out of your childhood. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. You know, God is so good. He takes all the brokenness of our life and he'll pull it together if we're willing to let him have it. And he makes something beautiful out of it. Just like he said in Genesis 50, 20, he wants to saving many lives with our past. Yes, and that's what's happening today. Well, thanks for this picture. Yeah. You were the oldest of seven. Yes. And you are the girl on the far left, apparently extending that leg because it had bad burns. Yes. So that the little one wouldn't be rubbing against it. Uh, this is a lovely family picture. Thank you. <laughs> but the story is not lovely. You call this a, a traveling road show. Well, Your we, family. we were always moving. My father had uh, severe problems from World War II, and he thought people were chasing us. So consequently, we wound up in Salvation Armies and, and uh, VFWs and sleeping out in parks. and VFWs. Yeah, veterans of foreign war. Oh. And, and just uh, a bumming from them, literally. And they'd put us up in their um, uh, dance hall situation to sleep overnight or or uh, sleep at the Red Cross or... You talk about nine people sleeping in the car. Yes, yes. Well, sometimes we got too crowded and we'd, we'd uh, make a, a bed on a picnic bench or, or something and, and several of us get on there and cover up with, uh, with whatever we had. <laughs> Seven on a picnic bench to sleep in the winter. Yeah. I mean, it just, I, I didn't, I had no idea it was so desperate. Uh, you, you would have to beg for food and gas. At times. And gas. other times we'd have a fancy house. You know, uh, somebody would help us get a, uh, a nice house and dad would work for a little bit, but he couldn't, he couldn't keep it up. Uh, his nerves were too bad and he had, he thought people were chasing him, so he'd take off. On the road. So you go from a, a really nice house down to sleeping on the park benches yeah. and up and down. But that tempers you. I mean, that, that builds strength. Well, we're going to see that. <laughs> one, one year you enrolled in 10 schools. Yes. That's how active this little family, little, this big family was. You had dyslexia, which made learning a challenge. Yes. Raped at the age of eight. It's great. Uh, I wrote in our Compass article in August, I, I told you that Avis was going to be here uh, with her book. I told you in this article, and here she is, finally. Um, I, I, I said in there that you did have wonderful healing from that trauma later in life, thanks yes. to the Lord. Age nine, hepatitis and pneumonia left your liver scarred. Uh, a life lesson you share in the book. Just because you don't have money doesn't mean you're broke. That's right. That's the attitude of God. That's the hope of God. And, and I had that. And my brothers and sisters have it to this day. Uh, you know, you don't need money to, to uh, be rich. Your mother had such reverence, and your dad too, for the Word of God, the Bible. Yes. Tell us about the Bible in your car. Well, all nine of us in a car, which is, was packed, but up in the back seat, the Bible went. And, and even though we had everything we owned was in that car, we weren't allowed to put anything on top of the Bible because dad said nothing is higher than the Bible. So we, we learned to respect the Bible. Yeah, and mom would read us a, a chapter a night if, uh, by a, a roadside uh, bonfire or by, uh, if, if we had a beds, we'd, uh, the, we'd all pile them on mom and dad's bed and she'd read a chapter, usually out of the New Testament. But mm -hmm. we, knew, we knew the story of Jesus and, and we knew her love for him. And you got a heart for the needy so early. Um, in your book, you say you thought even as a child, how can the world have so much and some people have so little? Yes. You felt the call to missions at 12. Yes. Did. Yes, I did. Actually, we were broken down uh, uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, alongside the road, sat up there all night. A couple came along and uh, with an old clunky pickup and we all piled in the back. They turned out to be missionaries to the Indians. And I saw my first 
experience of missionaries and her love, the woman, beautiful young woman, her love for the, the Indian children. And I, I knew I wanted to do that. Along with that, it's women all through our lives that would come, especially my sister is just one year younger than me. And um, when we were like, oh, 12, uh, 11 and 12, and you're starting to want to look nice. These women would come with, with uh, secondhand clothes, but nice, and they were kind, and they talked about Jesus. I don't remember the women, but I remember that love for Jesus, and I wanted to grow up to be that woman. Mm-hmm. I wanted to grow up. So, so people know that you can deposit by your kindness to kids, small kids, and talk, just talking about Jesus, let them knowing that love will, will plant something in their life. They may go through literally hell on earth, but that, that light will be in there and guide them. They'll want to be like that woman. And you are the example that nothing, nothing of all of this uh, was wasted. Going to have to fast track. Uh, you married, you, um, you earned a bachelor of special ed and a, and a master's in education, University of Arkansas, uh, became a teacher. That teaching passion yes. uh, has never died. Bell's palsy yes. would cost you your job, yes. but it became the launch pad for Go Ye Ministry. Yes, it did because uh, I got it in Honduras when I was going on uh, mission trips in the summer by myself. But, but through that, uh, a year of healing up, God did some marvelous things because I live way out in the country in Arkansas, down a dirt road. But he sent people and I got ordained and, and incorporated and a 501c3 and had no idea what's what. And then they retired me with two thirds of my salary. So I thought, woohoo! I'm a real missionary now. And I started taking on other people like me, you know, that, that hadn't been to missionary school. And God showed me that he would minister to them as, as they ministered to the people. Yes, this book is a story of volunteers, not just your story. Yes. And theirs are all beautiful yes. as well. <laughs> Let's meet some of them. We have just a few minutes, but we have to take you to Peru, where Go Ye Ministries is alive and well. Yes. And this is the Amazon we're looking at here. Ah, yes. They're beating on the drum to let them know the people along the Amazon that we're coming because we're going to do a medical. There's no communication. And in our next slide, we see... They're, they're, uh, we've dug several wells along the Amazon. That's really uh, all under uh, water during the rainy time. Oh, because it floods every year, yeah, the yeah, Amazon. Yeah, and that's our compound. That's the orphanage part. The church and the school are separate. But that's about two, eight, two and a half acres big. Beautiful. Scene. We're right, right outside the door. Some of the kids and I are... You're right I, in the middle. There's Avis in the middle, yeah. right under Jesus. <laughs> We're getting ready to walk to the church. And that's in our compound. Uh, Fred built that. My brother built all, everything and the playground. And so many of these kids have been physically and sexually abused and yes. abandoned. This is uh, 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 me working with the women on the dump. I love these women. We have a Bible study every week. Now, and the lady in the front is Maggie. That's uh, Jake's wife. Far on the far right. Yeah, that's Jake. Now, Jake in the middle is yeah. your new president. And he's a Canadian. Woohoo! Yes. They came down uh, almost three years ago now and followed me around and they have such a heart for the kids and, and they're doing a wonderful job. And there's Jake's wife on the right. Yes, and that's Tammy in the red. And that's our oldest, uh, uh, I hate to call her a child, but she came to us at 13 with a four day old baby. It was oh. her second child, anyhow. And, and um, uh, and now, now so she, she was your first orphan? Yes. This girl well, that we're yes. seeing again? Yes. Uh, and her son, who's now in third grade, and oh. she is in her fifth semester to be a psychologist. Wow. wow. <laughs> that is a wow. Yeah. Yeah. This whole story uh, is a wow. And I mean, we saw the garbage dump. It didn't it perhaps look like a garbage dump. That's really where this all began. Yes. In the dump. Yes. Uh, so much has grown up now. A school, a church. Actually, I think there's a picture of the church. Do we have the church there as well? Uh, there it is. Yes. This, this was the first building, right? Right. And it's, it is on the dump. And, and now the, the local governments were fighting over who owns the dump now, <laughs> now that we built all these buildings on it. But God is, is marvelous. Those women were so down, but now they have Jesus in them. And the ones that I started with are now they're out teaching. So and we have a radio program. One of my women's is the MC on the program. And she was so broken. 
Five kids, epileptic, couldn't hold a job, blah, blah, blah. And God has just raised her up. Psalm 113, verse 7, He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. All they need is Jesus, the love of Jesus. You know, people just need to, to, to love the unlovely and it changes the whole complexion of things. But I think a key here, Avis, uh, starting with your life and whatever heaven has allowed, God can turn it around. It, I, you know, you've got to read the book because of the story of, I, I, you know, my husband just found out that an airline that used to allow a third baggage for humanitarian purposes isn't doing that anymore. It's really hard to travel with your stuff yes. when you're a missionary. You got tubs from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Honduras just by your determination. <laughs> and, and even more alarming, after Hurricane Mitch, you took 45,000 pounds of supplies and yourself on a shrimp boat yes. to Honduras. <laughs> uh, in, in a terrible storm, it just, like I say, it's moving material. But the chutzpah to do that, to say, yes, I'm going to get all this stuff to Honduras because I'm going to go with it. Yes. came from that childhood, bumped from pillar to post, what? not even knowing where you'd sleep or... Well, I know that when, when God nudges you to do something, you just step forward because he'll, he'll open the doors and he'll give you the, the courage. It's not even courage because when you're walking through it, you don't realize the danger. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really don't. You really don't. So it's no, no uh, brag on me at all. It's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. You just follow him. <laughs> Could I attach a, a scripture to this from yes. the message translation? I'm actually going to put it up on the screen. Okay. Because, the, I mean, the story of Go Ye Ministries is a fabulous story. But I think the lesson for us all is the faithfulness of God. Yes. No matter what you've been through. Take a look at this. We're going to put it right up on the screen. And I'm going to read it for you. God deliberately chooses men and women that the culture overlooks and exploits and abuses. Everything that we have, right thinking and right living, a clean slate and a fresh start, comes from God by way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Much more to the story that we haven't had time to tell today, but guess what? At last, it is in print. It is at our e-store you will be amazed as you turn every page out of the dust story of an unlikely missionary. I'm so glad we've met this one. Avis, God bless you. Thank I know you. you're traveling around America telling the story. Yes, I am. As the work goes forward. Yes. there in Peru. Yes. Thank you.